We're just west of Quebec City at Motocross de Chambeau. Gate drop for 250 Moto 1 out front. It was a great jump by number 23. That's Josiah Natsky out front, followed closely by Mitchell Harrison, the two KTM boys. Nice start by Quinn Amiot. And up there on the two stroke was uh, number 613, Jimmy Dakotas. Getting up to the lead in the first lap, though, was Harrison, followed by Natsky, the two KTMs. And there in fifth place is the 125 doing the big jump. Nice start from William Creep. We haven't seen him yet this year. That's the number 38. Out front there, Josiah Nasky getting up into second place, getting around Kevin Benoit. Fourth is Ryder McNabb. Fifth on that 125 two-stroke is Jimmy Dakotas. Now Kevin Benoit closing in on Mitchell Harrison. Nasky to third. Fourth is McNabb. Nice little ride by number 14. That's Quinn Amiot. And there's 33. That's Tanner Scott looking good. He would end up seventh in this one. Number four, good to have him back racing. That's uh, Jake Piccolo back for the first time since round one when he put his shoulder out in the first turn. Nice hills, changes of elevation here at uh, Deschambeau. Challenging to the riders and the bikes. That rider McNabb up pressuring for the lead. Jimmy Dakotas riding. Had, uh, couldn't uh, let off though because Quinn Amia worked hard the entire moto and as you'll see, he would end up very close at the end. Nice, very strong ride by Tanner Scott after riding some ECAN classes. 38 to William Crete. He would end up 11th in this one, dropping back a little bit. Jake Piccolo also getting back on the bike this week, riding the E-Can. Nice battle out front. Mitchell Harrison, Ryder McNabb, Kevin Benoit, Josiah Natsky. Throw a blanket over them, but Kevin Benoit would tip over, drop back to fourth. And then when they came around again, it was Ryder McNabb who had found his way into the lead, followed by a nice little battle between Harrison and Natsky. Watch for them again in Moto2 as they would go at it. After tipping over, he would not lose a position as the lead four riders were quite a ways up in front, so Kevin Benoit safe in fourth. Currently still fifth late in the moto was Jimmy Dakotas. And then he got head down, still pushing forward, trying to catch him. Tanner Scott, the youngster out of Oro Medante, Ontario, looking good. Nice little battle behind him between Sam Ginger, who won the pre-mix. Sebastian Racine had to move his way up, and there's Austin Jones. He would end up in the top ten overall. At the flag, though, it's going to be the defending champ, number one, Ryder McNabb, followed closely by Mitchell Harrison, Josiah Natsky in third. A little bit back here to fourth place, Kevin Benoit, who would have some trouble breathing afterwards. And fifth, and look how close fifth and sixth were here. Dakota's holding off Quinn Amiot. 450 Moto 1, it was a great start, and a whole shot by number 15, Jess Pettis. You can see number 84, Tanner Ward, moved up to the uh, 450 class. Third is Tyler Medallia, and they came around. It was Pettis out front, second to uh, Tanner Ward, defending champ. Dylan Wright had made his way up into third. Fourth was Tyler Medallia, but you see a little puff of smoke there. That would not end well. Up there as well was number 20, Jeremy McKay, and his new ride, the St. Cesare Yamaha, being followed by a former uh, teammate, that's uh, Tyler Gibbs. File through now. Dylan Wright would close right in up on uh, Jess Pettis, but Pettis was not about to give in easily. Third place would be Tanner Ward still. As we scan back here, you can see the distance uh, between the riders here. Back to uh, Jeremy Mackay would have a great day, his best finish of the season. Tyler Gibbs would then have Sean Moffenbeyer all over him. The two front runners heading out front. Tanner Ward did not want to let these two guys go, showing that he belongs up at the front in this uh, in the top premier class here. Jeremy McKay also looking good there. But he then had Sean Moffenbeyer closing in on him in this battle for fourth place. Fifth was, fifth was Tyler Gibbs. He would end up sixth in this one. And the always fun to watch battle between Andy Trutes and number 18, Parker Eel, did not let us down. They would end up 11 and 13th in this one. And now you can see Sean Moffenbar is right on the rear wheel of Jeremy McKay trying to fight for that fourth place. Number 22 Gibbs then had uh, under the weather uh, 25 Daniel Elmore on him. 26, that's uh, Julian Bennett move up, but he would fall and drop back. Good to see Gage Stein up from Maryland. He would have a top nine finish and 11th overall in the day. No troubles for number one Dylan Wright out front heading down to the amateur finish line. Second to Jess Pettis. Third, but uh, losing touch with the two front runners was Tanner Ward. And getting around 
Jeremy Mackay into fourth place was Sean Moffenbeyer putting Mackay to fifth. But they came around again. Troubles for Moffenbeyer as he would fall in. Mackay would get around him as a bit of rain began to fall with the last lap in the first moto. The win would go to number one. That's Dylan Wright. Six seconds back, Jess Pettis. One lap down, a great battle for 10th place between St. Cyr and Parker Eels. A minute down on the leaders was third place Tanner Ward. Then came fourth, a great finish for Jeremy Mackay in front of the home crowd, letting him hear it for sure. And fifth would go to Sean Moffenbeyer. The 50 Moto 2 and a great jump and hole shot for number 23, followed by number, uh, that's number 8, Mitchell Harrison. Great jump for number 44, Dylan Rempel. 14, Quinn Amiot up there as well. Oh, triple clamp troubles for Jimmy Dakota's on the line. Sees him dead last. Number eight and number 23 already beginning to separate themselves as the top four go through. There's fifth, sixth, seventh, a great start for uh, the number 33, Tanner Scott. As we look back here, we see the number four around in the corner with some work to do. He put his head down. And number 31, a day he'd rather forget. Boy, oh boy, number 31, 32, 17, 17 for 17th overall. The two front runners there now, Josiah Nasky and Mitchell Harris. And you can see a real time. This is early in the race, too. Nice little gap back to the number one of Ryder McNabb, who had a 30-point lead in this uh, championship, so not a whole lot of pressure on him to win, but uh, Quinn Amiot looking good there in fifth. Dylan Rempel looking good, same two with uh, number 33. Has a nice battle, lots of work to do for Sebastian Racine as he would have to make his way up through the pack. And there it is, Kevin Benoit getting around his teammate up into third place. Number 44 looking good there. There's Piccolo trying to go with Sebastian Racine as he was now all over the number 14 of Quinn Amiot there. He would make the pass. That would be fifth and sixth. And there is Jake Piccolo trying to go with that uh, that tandem. He would uh, finish just behind them. Mitchell Harrison for the lead. Back again, these two right to the finish line out front. Oh, it's a win for Mitchell Harrison over Josiah Nasky. That close in second. Third, to number 126, Kevin Benoit still feeling the effects of his crash to Sandy Lee. Fourth place and second overall. That would be Ryder McNabb. And moving all the way up to fifth, that was Sebastian Racine with a heck of a ride for him to come through the pack. And there we are, third place overall to Josiah Natsky, second to Ryder McNabb, and first with some writing to the uh, hometown Quebec crowd there for Mitchell Harrison. There's your podium. Here's a look at your points. Fifty Moto 2 got underway and a great start again from the number 15 of Jess Pettis and check it out. That's uh, number 20 Jeremy McKay followed by Medallia and Ward and Gibbs up there. Coming around to first lap it is Jess Pettis up front. Much better start to this one for the defending champ Dylan Wright. Third to Tyler Medallia with a new motor. Then came Moffenbeyer McKay. Great jump, great start for the number 206. That's uh, that's Logan Leitzel working his way back into shape, racing it back. There's Michael De Silva. He would end up uh, DNF 11 for 15th, but Tanner Ward would hit the flagger stand and actually break one of the legs off of it, so he would drop back a ways. Have a lot of ground to cover to get back up. And now look at this, not wanting to give an inch. Jess Pettis is not about to roll over for the defending champ there, as you can see. Tyler Medallia in third, and right behind you can see some dust there. That was Moffenbeyer. Moffenbeyer catching up to him, but falling back, only losing a place to number 20, Jeremy Mackay, so not a huge amount of damage. Good to see number 231, that's Josh Clark. He would end up uh, doing nothing this one, unfortunately, for 17th overall. Number 26, Julian Bennett, just showing some great late season strength in this class. Challenging hills of Motocross Station Bow Circuit. Two front runners out front there as third place. Medallia now had the number 20, kind of pressuring him, and number three making a charge back after that fall. Sixth place, Julian Bennick looking good there in sixth. Troubles out front though for Dylan Wright. 
few seconds back up to around 10 seconds at one point back to the number 15 of Jess Pettis and here is Moffenbeier starting to pressure the number five of Medallia for that third place but Moffenbeier would have some troubles and drop back ah so no problems up front though there it is Dylan Wright going 1-1 on the day second place is going to go to the number 15 of Jess Pettis third Pilot Medallia and then behind him is Sean Moffenbeier and this close in fifth was Jeremy Mackay on his new team showing uh, great speed on his home track. Third to Sean Moffenbeier overall, second to Jess Pettis. And another win, undefeated Dylan Wright. There's your podium, and now we take a week off before we head to the final round at Walton Raceway. And there's a look at your results.